All right, honky tonk. Oh, side plus honky tonk this week. Yeah, is it? I thought I'd bring it back. Yeah, do you, you know, you say you do the sigh for good luck, right? This is what you say. It's good luck and it's verbal yoga. It's a kind of a stress relief thing. So do you do it, would you, just to want to be sure, would you do it if you were going to chat like a lass up or you're going to make a bet at the bookies? Would you sigh before you do it for good luck? Yeah, if I was like about to take a left turn at some lights. You do you do it I'd do that just to be on the safe side, yeah. So it's definitely not. Do done. a lot. It's def- definitely not done out of disrespect There's to no me. There's no malice intended towards you, Bob okay. Mortimer. And honky tonk, just fun between mates. It's just yeah. a nice name, isn't it? Just a nice name. Catchy. So what what about I was thinking what I'll call you again, like Mr. Fungalo, Mr. Onions. Call us what you like. Hot dog run. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Should we start again, see how it goes? All right. Well can I start this time, right? I, I won't do a side because no, I don't no, want to detract thing. from your look. All right, hot dog run. <laughs> All right, honky tonk. Hey, let's get going. I got out much to say this week, have you, Andy? I've got loads to say. All but right. I'm gonna say it in Alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. Yeah. Oh, well, that's one way of organising your life, isn't it? So in the morning, for example, you when you wake up, you think, what should I scratch? My anus. Yes. Yeah? Then, my, then balls. my belly. <laughs> oh, well, I went for balls. You did. So. You went below the belt again. <laughs> so where should we start? I, do you know, where do you buy your socks, Andy? Where do I buy my socks? Yeah. Supermarkets, Bob. Fair enough. Do you get a lot of shrinkage? No matter what, you know, even if you buy a size... I tend to. I've got size eight feet, but right. if I buy a, so I buy eleven size eleven to thirteen. What? What? But within a week, they seem to. They're like child socks. Does no, that happen no. to you? No, I mine are fine. I will just get like size six to nine and a half. Right, and they last for months. Well, are they made of some kind of nylon or just polyester? Like co- or something? Cotton polyester mix usually. When you say mix, how much cotton's in them? That's probably about thirty percent. Thirty percent cotton, and you get them at. Little up old the Asda. Asda, up the Asda, yeah. whatever packs of ten or something. Yeah. What colour do you get? Fun just, ones. Just well, I get black ones usually. Yeah. But for festive occasions like Christmas and birthdays, I'll get like maybe some Star Wars ones. Yeah. Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. Something like that. Something fun. And then, do you only ever wear them at the, when a yeah. festive period? And I go shoeless for the festive period. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, if you bought a pair of fun socks, if you only wear them for the festive period. They'll last you more or less a lifetime. That would only be 60 wears, wouldn't it? Well, it would be, but fashion's changed in the world of fun. Do you know, you're right, and it's very perceptive fun does... You know, I, you I know. mean, like, I'm wearing Wallace and Gromit ones for me birthday in July. Yeah. But, you know, two years ago, it would have been maybe Peter K socks. Fair enough. You know, you are right, because like, in Victorian times, fun was, I don't know, putting a hoop around, was running around the street with a hoop. Yeah. Or sitting a child really close to an open fire or something like <laughs> yeah. that. And it's changed now. Ten year ago, it used to be running up a hill really fast and then running down again. Now yeah. it's it's, now it's Xbox. Xbox, yeah. Okay, That's well, just a decade. Nice little bit of insight there, Andy. Um, I just wondered where you bought your socks. You don't have any problem with supermarket socks. No, but why are you shrinking after a week? Have well, I know, you're making me worry. Do your feet throb or something? Well, throbbing would expand them, wouldn't it? It wouldn't necessarily shrink them. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they'd been washed too hot or something. That I don't might know. Be it. Mind you, I've had it all my life, though. Have you? With socks, yeah. Well, we've got off to a cracking start this week. Thank you. With do, that. But, um, do you have to call a midwife when you want a dump? <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at you, I'm wondering. No. No, okay, fine. No, I'm right. all right on my own, thanks. All right, well, let's crack on. Do you want to set up your credentials at the beginning? Go on, then people should know that Do I know memory all football statistics thing. since the year 1876. When football was invented. Memory man. Hello. Bob, do you remember Euro 1984 when there was no British teams involved and so it wasn't on the telly and the only way you could find out the results was by listening to them being carried on the wind directly from France? Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Memory Man. Whoa. Not bad, eh? I thought I had you this week. It I wasn't one of you easy. It wasn't that far distant, was it? Speaking of the Euros, I noticed you've had your ear pierced there, Bob. Yeah. Just your right ear? Yeah. Is that for the Euros? Because you're going over there. Is that to make you look tough before you go over? I don't understand why the right. Why would a right ear make you look tough. I don't know. 
I do not like it. I, I thought that the right ear signified something different. It's a right. It's a little apricot, um, pottery apricot, hanging off a hoop. Hanging off a hoop in my right ear. Yeah, I like it. Do you think it makes you more French? <laughs> I suppose maybe You're it does. Trying to fit in when you're over there. It makes me a little bit more French friendly. Yeah. Okay. Ah, hello, <laughs> welcome. And they might confuse it for a peach. Yeah. But it's, uh, I don't mind about or a nectarine. Do you hurt? like nectarine? You like nectarine? Does it hurt? It hurt when I pieced it. Yeah. It is. It's like a little crunch as the as as it takes the little bit of flesh out. Yeah. I I ate the bit of flesh iced if I could. Did you? Well, just raw. Yeah. Did they not boil, boil it up for you first? Well, don't you eat the flesh around your nails? Well, yeah, but that's not my nails. That's not my ear. No, the flesh around your nails. It, is, it clearly isn't your nails. Is I'm not it? a cannibal. Well, no, it's not cannibalism if you eat yourself. Yeah, it is. Who said? Self cannibalism. All right, well, that's it. Yes, it's self cannibalism. <laughs> it's not cannibalism. Do you watch Mob? Oh no, hold on, that's someone else's. Talking what? about Fra- talking about France. I was thinking to myself, do you reckon that going up to Montmartre and having your silhouette drawn by um, a French art student or whoever it is does it up there is probably as good as life ever gets. I couldn't tell you. I've never been to Mont- Montmartre. Montmartre, yeah. Is that what's that a supermarket? No, it's a big hill at Sacre Coeur in look, overlooking Paris. I've been, I've been to Paris. Yeah, I've never been. I've been to Disneyland Paris. You've been to Disneyland. I've been Paris. to Disneyland Paris. It's the only place in Paris I've been to. What do you book your holidays in supermarkets as well? <clears throat> What's wrong with Disneyland Paris? You like Disneyland Paris? No, fucking terrible. Actually. Well, there you go. You can't get your hands on any booze. No. And when you do, it's seven quid a pint. Well, but, but you can get you on the baguette, though, can't you? Oh, your baguettes are ten a penny, aren't they? Even over here now. It's the funniest of all the breads, though, isn't it? And I tell you what, there's a 45-minute queue to get on the frigging Dumbo ride. And half of them, half of them are grown adults that haven't even got kids with them. Excuse me, what's the Dumbo What is a Dumbo it's, it's ride? It's just like a very, very, very slow-moving ride. Yeah. Where there's two of you and you sit in a Dumbo. You yeah. Know, Dumbo the elephant. Oh, the elephant. I thought well, you meant, like, for Dumbo... <laughs> You know, like, you're a Dumbo for dum. Sorry, yeah, it's an elephant. It's a slow-moving elephant. Pink elephant ride. A pink elephant gently meanders around the track. And you can control track. it and make it go up and down as you're going around slowly. Yeah. How f- and and it's on, it lasts about two minutes. And you queued for 45 minutes. Right, because half the queue was like grown adults. You know what you should have done? You well, should have shit your pants on it so they had to stop the ride. That would have taught them. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to do that next time, except I'm never going back. Because of that. So where do you where do you tend to go then? Do you do you like do you go Universal in America or something like that? Disneyland I've been or? there. Yeah. 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 I saved up. <laughs> That's what I'm just asking. You must have booked your holiday for this year. Where are you going this year? I haven't got anything booked for this year. Where I haven't would got you? Any money? Where would you have liked to have gone? Because I was told that this podcast was going to be an earner. Yeah. Well, I never told you that. And it really. hasn't worked out like that, has it? So, holiday plans on hold. Very much so. <laughs> Steve McLaren. Are we there already with Steve McLaren? Well, would you like to, to I'd, ponder I'm on... I was ready for Steve McLaren. What he's up to at the moment. What do you reckon? Well, I reckon, this is what I'm seeing, Andy, right? I'm seeing the fat lass, yeah, that he's with. I think she's staring out the window, but she's eating the beans on toast, yeah? He's upstairs reading instructions for his power washer that you mentioned. Yeah. You know, his power washer, because he can't get... He, he can't get it to generate suds for for washing his car. Right. Um, so he's having a look at the uh, his Skoda Octavia, I think it is. Do you think it probably is? I think I'm a it bit. Is. Yeah. You've, Skoda Octavia. When he's not driving the minibus, that is. Yeah. He's a good driver, isn't he? I think he might be thinking to himself, I'm Steve McLaren and I'm going to apply for an ad- the advanced, the Institute of Advanced Motorists. Yeah. Because I'm careful, responsible. I look ahead. I think ahead yeah. when I'm driving. He's like, you know? I know how good I am, but I want a certificate to show to people. Yeah. So that I can talk about it. Yeah, and he could he could saw it. The ba- they give him a badge. Yeah, Did he, he could, get a badge as well? You do, yeah. yeah. And he, he could saw that onto the sleeve of his short sleeve. For when he's driving the minibus. No, just when he's out and about. Say he's like down at down at the garden centre or whatever, yeah. buying a new attachment for his hose hose lock stuff yeah. and that. People say, "What's that badge?" Mr. McLaren said, oh, that? Oh, that's because it's, it's the Institute of Advanced Motorists hoping that they'll say then, oh, I, what's that? I said, oh, it's an institute. It just acknowledges that you're one of the, the better drivers. And he'd know. have it on the right-hand side, wouldn't he? On the right sleeve. Yeah. So when he's stopping at the lights, he just lift it up a little bit towards the window and whoever's yeah. in the next lane. 
I just look across and go, oh, aye, aye. I see I'm dealing with an expert here. Oh, whoops, is Daisy. I'll let yeah. him pass. Yeah. I'll let him pass, yeah. I'm I'll, not going to cut I'll yield to Mr. <laughs> McLaren. The other thing is, and I don't know whether they're the, in the same time, you know his yellow snake, his big yellow yeah. snake he's got? I've got a feeling it swallowed a, 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 a dog chew, <laughs> like your dog chew, when it's made him spew up <laughs> on the toilet carpet. Because I think Steve has a toilet carpet. Yeah. Um, but he'll have a mat as well around the toilet, won't he? Around the bowl, even though there'll hardly any be ever, and hardly ever be any spillages. No, because he'll have a really be, fast jet. As he'll long be as careful as well, yeah. won't he? He probably rests it on. I'm going to say something like a, a half ruler, yeah, like a plate. You know, like he probably rests it on that, lines it up, and then bang. <laughs> yeah, that's the length of it. And that was nearly two pints, yeah. Yeah. That was nearly two pints. Of course, what it does is the added bonus, if he's got any, if the fat lass has left any little Todd streaks on the back of the pot, it knocks them into touch. Yeah. He'll have a good aim as well, won't he? Oh, I'm saying he's got this arrangement. This, like, I call plate, you're going to think a dinner plate. I mean, like, just a flat bit of steel. Yeah. That That he rests it in. He just rests that, lines it up. Like a pencil holder. I think what he did was... At one point, he rested his dine onto a, a, I'll say, a seven before steel plate. Yeah? yeah. He drew round it. Yeah. And this just all happened kind of naturally and organically. He wasn't setting out to make this thing. No. It. It. it just. He was just messing about one day yeah. and stuff that was lying around and. And thought, yeah, that 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 little offcut would be useful for helping me with direction with me fast piss. With Clear and the Fat Lasses yeah. streaks. Hey, well, that's Steve McLaren anyway, I suppose. Well, I've got a different point of view. Okay, what you reckon? I re- well, it's, it's half term, isn't it? I reckon he's out in the minibus and I reckon he's took a group of disadvantaged kids up the Scottish borders. Yeah. And the big lass, she's away in Marbella. Right. On, on another hen week. It's the fifth one she's been on this year. Right. And she's staying in the same resort as Sam Allardyce. Did you see that video of Sam, Sam Allardyce? Having well, a bit of a dance in Marbella. Having a lovely time, wasn't he? Yeah. And I reckon that she's, te- she's texted Steve to tell him while he's in the Scottish borders that yeah. she's in the same resort as Sam. as Big Sam. And he's pretending he's cool with it, but he's seething, really. Yeah, he would furious. be seething, wouldn't he? So he started to get really short-tempered with the disadvantaged kids. Yeah. And he's you know, telling them to shut the fuck up. Oh, Steve. Them. And he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't like hearing only himself when he's put, he only He'll only curse when he's pushed. Absolutely. When he's really pushed. yeah. But it's going to end up with one of the kids trying to knife him in the car park of Pottery World, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. So, no, it's only when, he's under, when he's under extreme pressure you get the swears out of him, don't you? I don't think he ever swore when his manager in Newcastle or Derby. Absolutely not. He might have done once or twice when he was England manager, but... He tries his best not to. I remember once... He standards, in it? Standards. Yeah, he's still got standards, thankfully. I remember once he shut the uh, bedroom door on the, the on, on his snake, the last little... He thought the snake had followed him upstairs <laughs> to go to For bed. Bedtime. But yeah, yeah. And he shut the door and caught the snake. He's like, fuck! <laughs> and then he caught himself in the mirror. And the snake had gone, like, <laughs> like And do. spewed up on his bedroom <laughs> carpet. So, Steve, well, wherever he is, whatever he's doing, um, best he's wishes. He's unhappy. Best wishes from us, Andy. Yeah, always best wishes. Yeah. All, all good, nothing bad. Good times ahead, I reckon, yeah. Let's hope so for Steve. Andy, you look to me like you're a big, massive, big, massive fan of the Blues Brothers, yeah? Ah, do you reckon? Yeah, and I just wondered, are you are you actually in one of them, like, tribute Blues Brothers acts? You know, and you do the nutty dance and all that. No, I'm no? not. No, Bob. Actually, I don't like the Blues Brothers. <laughs> You love I think the it's a brothers. hugely overrated film. What are the children? I could name umpteen films that are better than the Blues Brothers off the top of my head. Name one better. Gremlins 2. Correct. Fair enough. There you go. So you're not. All right, then, in a similar vein, because this has struck me, I think it might be one of my wife's questions, actually, book, so it's on my mind. So I'll just better check because it has to be. Fo- yeah, it's one of my wife's questions. So can I go on Do to Do you want to move into them now, then? If I'm, is Have we right? done with football yet? Yeah. Oh, we've done Steve McLaren, haven't we, of course? Um, wife's questions Let's questions go. direct from my Bring wife to on. yourself first one's ever so simple um, Andy do you watch Mob Wives no Bob's wife I do not watch Mob Wives I've not even heard of it excuse me well I'm not in the crime club am I it's I'm not, not in Bob's crime club 
You haven't what you don't know of Mob Wives, nope. the greatest single half hour on, uh, of television. Nope. On, but you're kidding me. Nope. Is I've this spent just the last couple of weeks watching the first series of Game of Thrones? Yeah. To try to get into that. And how did you find Shite. it? Really? Yeah. I mean, I watched the first series, left a bit of a gap. I don't know, two months till I watched the second one. I had no idea what was going on. So I had, I, 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 at the end of the first one, I did have sufficient motivation to try the second, but it's quite complicated it for a northern be, lad, isn't it? It seems to be mostly about genealogy. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. He's, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels and it's a bit a, of fighting. It's maths. It's like medieval maths. It seems like a problem. Test. Yeah, but that you say you don't know mob wives, right? Yeah, you say that you've only recently watched Game of Thrones, yeah. yeah? But I'm aware that for a few years now, you've been having a go at Game of Thrones. Yeah. So what's that all about? You're obviously perfectly aware of Game of Thrones. I'm aware of it. But are you doing the same with Mob Wives? You know, you well no, I'm know. I'm not even aware of Mob Wives, but I'm prepared to give it a try. Will you give it a try Can for I me? give it a try this next week and uh, come back to you on I would love week. to hear what you think of Mob Wives. Okay. I think it's electric. All right, what channel's well, it on then? It's on um, ITVB, ah, BE that is, yeah. not BEE, or yeah. not just B, BE. The in-between B. B, yeah. So, well, thank you for that answer. I suppose you, if you haven't seen it, you haven't seen it. Next um, question. You, wife's question number two. Andy, you look like Greg Wallace. Is that, whoa! Is that... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, can I finish the wife's okay, question, no. please? That's very disrespectful. You look like Greg Wallace. Is that why you hate him? Do you feel his success should be yours? First of all, I don't look anything like Greg Wallace. Yes, you do. No, I don't. No, yes, you do. No. Greg Wallace looks like Bunsen Honeydew from the Muppets. I don't know that. The scientist that hasn't got any eyes, but he wears glasses. Oh, well, it's a vague. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Greg Wallace, and that's not me. That's not who you're looking at right now. Well, you say that. Who do you think I look like right now? If you put my car, my Greg Wallace cardigan on and some of his designer specs. So it's a big stretching, isn't it? I've got to dress up as them. It's not a great deal, on. you had a cardigan and a pair of Just specs. Just because I haven't got much hair and I've got a round head. Why do you hate him? I don't trust him. Why don't you trust him? I don't trust him? his motives. What do you think his motives are? A televisual domination. No, that's not his motive. Getting as many followers on Twitter as he possibly can. That's what you... So you don't trust that motive? No. I don't trust anybody with lots of followers on Twitter. I've got more followers than you. I know you have. I don't trust you either. <laughs> okay, well, it's gone... It's a bit of a blind alley. I'm with the wife there. I think your resentment is based on the fact that you think, I am... Look like... Not only do I look like Greg Wallace, I could sell veg better than him, I could eat food better than him. Well, that goes without saying, doesn't so it? So why, why, oh, why saying. isn't it me? Is yeah, that's where maybe it will from. be me eventually, Bob? Maybe it will be. Maybe this podcast's going to be a springboard, yeah, to me being on whatever the the two thousand and thirty three equivalent of Master Chef is. Well, well, yeah. I mean, third, you'll be dead by then, so you'll not know how it turns out. But third question from the wife, Andy. I'm aware that you favour cheap cuts of meat, goose flank, rabbit's wings, that sort of thing. But have you ever tried tin beef burgers? I think you and your family would flourish on them. What do you mean by flourish? Or what does she mean by flourish? Oh, do I imagine know? she means the same as any English-speaking person means. You know, that, that you, you... Thrive. Get, you thrive, yeah. <laughs> In a nutritional sense. I suppose nutrition, your skin would glow, your bones would stop creaking, you might even put a bit of height on, something like that. No, I've never tried... Tin beef burgers. I don't even think they're a thing. You're very disparaging about them. They're beautiful. You can get a chicken in a can. I know. I love a chicken in a can. You know, in France, it's considered a delicacy because oh, it soaks in it. So, pardon me, what was that under your breath? There you go. <laughs> you can fill your boots with them, can't you, next oh, month when you're over beautiful. there? Beautiful. You, will you hoop to your ring with its. We hoop to your ring. With its apricot hanging off it. And a tin of, tin of chicken under the Excuse me, moi. Excuse me, moi. Monsieur. Monte la fenêtre. Il a chicken de la canne. L'escalier. Puff of war. A grand. Puff of war is Mexican. Yeah, but you get your point across. That's the end of the wife's questions. Um, they haven't led anywhere in particular. No. They haven't led I think we've treaded water with that a bit this week. Yeah, but as a recommendation, I really, really strongly recommend that tin chicken, Andy. It's quite hard Not to get hold of. 
Mob wives, I'm not going to say mob anything. Mob wives. Ab- mob wives and a tin chicken at yeah, the same time. Yeah, and a tin beef burger. Just one. Filled your pan with fat and you're left with a bit of leather, but okay. a bit of tasty leather. What was your favourite bit about Top Gear the other night, Bob? Favourite bit about the top, new top... top Gear. The new Top Gear with Chris <sighs> The one with Timmy Mallet. Sorry, Timmy Mallet, yeah. Yeah, um, I think probably my favourite bit of it was when they saw the first shot of him, of Evans, full length, and he had his jeans tucked into his little booties, his little furry booties. And, you know, like, it was it was like he was trying to th- throw the audience back to the 80s, you know, look like some... Back to Wackadier. So, yeah. <laughs> some sort of, like, you know, like 1980s Iranian disco dancer who yeah. took his jeans in, and he was just trying to say, look... It, imagine it this was out. Imagine you're watching the eighties, whack a day. Yeah. Hey hey, right? And then you you know do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the only other alternative explanation. Well, what is an alternative explanation for going on television wearing your jeans tucked into some little eighties booties? I've, I've never worked in television, so I don't know. You you have. Yeah, but you is c- it a secret code? <sighs> I mean, Andy, you know you're being difficult here. You're you're making your TV debut, yeah? You wouldn't be doing cars. What would you be doing? I don't know, freaking cheap cuts or... Probably lawnmowers. No, you'd be on the TV channel, you know, TV sales. The What's shopping the, channel. Shopping channel. So you're on the shopping channel. Flogging sh- tat. I don't, I don't think you... You're not, you're not like a tat. You're not a rag and bone man, Andy. I think you'd be flogging electronic equipment that w- would last between a week and six months. Yeah, with big promises. Fry your chicken. What the fuck are chicken dippers? Fry your chicken dippers. Fry your little pizzas. In the air fryer. In the air fryer. Ready in only seven minutes. Seven minutes. Whether you like it or not. And then voice in the ear saying, hit home the health benefits, Andy. Hit home the health benefits. And you say, and of course, by using less fat, you put on less fat. You will live for another five to six years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if you consume these chicken dippers. So anyway, I have to finish it, Andy. So you're about to go on, and a, a nice lass comes on, comes in the room, says, "Is wardrobe? Mm-hmm. Um, would you like to wear these blue Pepe jeans and tuck them in these fur-lined little booties, Andy? Yeah. What would you say? Fuck off. Exactly. So please don't... You think I'm some kind of idiot? Yeah. So don't say to me, your telly's different. You know, Chris Evans chose Why to wear... Why was he doing it? I don't know. As I say, I think it was a diversion to make, to try and make us remember that time when we thought, i tell you what would be good on telly, a fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I asked you that. Luminol, Andy, I just want to give you a little warning. Yeah, please do. Do you know Luminol? Yeah. That you spray on crime scenes yeah. and it shows up where there's blood. Yeah, I just wanted to give you uh, just a little warning in case you ever get involved. Is that case it does get involved? I don't know. Just in some way, maybe. No, I'm not. I'm not subplot either. I think you're going to murder someone or whatever. But just to put in that your locker that it does have its disadvantages, Luminol. And what are they? Well, CSI would have you think that it's like the be all and end all. Spray it's the WD forty of of crime, forensics. Of forensics, yeah. But um, it can also show. Um, Poo, Papa, mm-hmm. Papa, Todd, yeah, and Wee Wee, piss, yeah, mm. and things like um, horseradish also shows up. Does it? Yeah, really shows up. Like you think, oh, this scene's grizzly, and then someone would hold up a pot of horseradish and say, Sir, <laughs> nothing to see here. Nothing to see. Ah, Simple kitchen spillage. <laughs> no one died. And it, and it also it dilutes. Um, you know, genetic evidence, DNA evidence, right? Dilutes it, can make it unusable. So, right. just does, think. Does on. this come from Bob's crime club? I was just I, mentioned last week in my crime club. I've just sat there thinking, oh wow, Luminol, man. You know, Luminol. Yeah. It's the criminals. It's enemy. the all and end all. So, be honest, you know, it's as all I'm saying is hand out, in hand with DNA. It's yeah. it's gonna yeah. eliminate all. If the crime Luminol eventually. don't get you, the DNA, DNA will. will. That's well, the motto of Bob's Crime Club, isn't just it? Just pointing out that it has got its disadvantages. Okay, okay. So over to you, Andy. What well, do you I've reckon? been I've been looking for a few reviews of the podcast online just yeah. to see what the listeners have been thinking and saying about us. Yeah, these are all genuine. 
Um, first one I found, this says, Thank you for this podcast. Thanks to you, I'm now knocking back 10 wheat a bix slathered with white dolmio each day, and I've never been more regular. So that's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, that's quite nice. Who's that from? That's from, hang on, uh, that's from uh, John, John Window. Oh, John uh, Window. Yeah. It's John an Window. unusual name, Andy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's what he. That's it. Might be an alias. It's the internet, I isn't suppose it? you see, it might be an alias. Yeah. There's another one. Might not be Andy. It might be though. There's another one here. Um, this one says, "I think Bob is cruel to the one with the fat voice. The lad probably doesn't even live in a bungalow. He's only saying it to try and make himself sound important, and he probably sleeps in some kind of tarpaulin-covered pit. Leave him alone, Bob. He's suffered enough." Oh, that's someone on your side there. Yeah. Isn't there? Some. Some. Yeah. What's that? No, Sympathiser. Who's, who's, let's give him a shout out. Uh, that? that's, uh, that's, that's one's by uh, John Microphone. Oh, so that's this is a new item you're introducing, is it? No, these, Bo- are, these are legit. Bogus these compliments. are genuine reviews. Bogus compliments to Ronnie Hot Dog. No, these are real. All right, you got any more? There's one more. Um, the one with the fat voice is the cool one. Bob is clearly some kind of dick. All right, and who's that from? That's uh, John, uh, John, John Mortimer. All right, well, John Mortimer, the author and barrister. Sounds know. like it him. Might be your brother, the, I don't know. No, but the language, it really sounds like him. But he said, some kind of dick. <laughs> hey, Andy, I always wanted to ask you, are you any good at shoeing horses? Nah, but I told a donkey to fuck off once. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my joke, you see. That's, that, that was my joke. No, don't do that, Andy. No, I, 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 did, the, I did the punchline there. Yeah, but you, if I hadn't said, are you any good at shoeing horses? Yeah. It's, I'm setting it up for you. Yeah, but it's not your joke, is it? No, it's not mine. No, I could have said, yeah. No, well, it wasn't my joke. I don't want it included. I could have then. said, I'm quite quite confident at that, yeah. Well, I don't want it included. Wasn't even any, he wasn't even funny. What I did you say I that for? Do you think it was funny because you stop said in, like, the F word? Stopping in. Honestly. So the Euros are coming up. Just wanted to say, Poland at 50 to 1, Austria at 40 to 1. Croatia at 35 to 1. Each way, that's where your money should be, isn't it, Andy? Right, so you think one of those three is going to get to the final? I, I think it's a very good chance. I think it represents a lot better uh, value than 9 to 1 on uh, England. F- for example, or as I'm going there, par example. 900 to 1 for England would probably be... That bad? Yeah. You went to see them at Sunderland, didn't you? I went, I went you? to see them at Stadium of Light last Friday night and it was a, oh, a mortifying experience. What's your analysis? Awful. Awful. Clueless. I thought Australia were terrible. Did anyone come out with, with any credit? Um, just my son. Because he spent most of the second half playing on my iPhone. Which was, who was the best performer for, who was the, for, best the, England for the England? Player? Yeah. Um, oh. I've got to try to think who was playing again. Well, I mean, it's very different watching it. I, on telly, I thought, Wayne Wilson, Rooney. I thought, well, she was all right, Rooney were all right. Yeah. Rashford, you want to think of Rashford? Oh, no, thank you. No. N- not for me. No. Please, no. No. Out of his depth, That's to be ridiculous. honest. He should have been the with Rashford the under-21s at the prestigious Toulon tournament. Which we won, without Rashford. Without Rashford, yeah. Imagine if we'd had Rashford. We'd have won it twice. We'd have won it. <laughs> Did I ever tell you, Andy, I'm so proud of this. Did I ever tell you, I, I was? I once met the bloke, I was in Birmingham, my brother's, um, I can't remember what his birthday or whatever, his 50th or something, and I, saw, I met the bloke who would have carried out the surgery on Richard Hammond if his crash had happened in Birmingham. Did I That's tell quite you a that? claim to fame, isn't it? No, it's brilliant. Has he got that it? stitched onto his arm on some kind of badge? I know, I was just chatting to him and he mentioned it. So, a pretty, a pretty awesome, that, isn't it? And what, did he, what did he say? Did he elaborate? Did he say how he would have handled the Not situation? Not because, I mean, that's such a magnificent... He just said it and that's it. Nothing else to say. God. Shit, you would have... If it, the accident had happened in Birmingham, you would have... So he was obviously a surgeon or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I couldn't have to, as soon as he told me that I was too intimidated to it's a lot of pressure to deal with isn't it I, I just haven't to live with that I said it's a pleasure to have met you the bloke who would have treated him and if he did he gets counselling and stuff did he he was taking it in his terms, tra- honestly he, was he, was right tra- he wore it really well yeah you know he obviously it's a burden for him yeah. but he wore it really well is that why he talks about it all the time or as the same phrase le chemise est grand he I'll wore it you. really well I'll take your word for that so what else would we like to do? I've got some questions for you, pal. Oh, I don't... Well, you've given from me the... blood relatives of mine. But are they just bogus, like these Twitter things? No, no, you? these are all real questions from blood relatives. All right, well, let's get through them quickly, if you don't I'm mind. trying to get inside your mind and your lifestyle. Bob! 
Yeah. As a millionaire living in a millionaire. Buckinghamshire pleasure dome with your solid... I've moved to Buckinghamshire, have I? Could you just please be Sorry. quiet while I do right. the questions? All right. I'll start again. Bob, as a millionaire living in a Buckinghamshire pleasure dome with your solid gold hip replacement, do you allow your servants to have free electricity in their quarters or do you make them generate their own with exercise bikes that you picked up cheap from the Argus Outlet on eBay? I don't have any servants. I don't live in Buckinghamshire. Next question. So how do they power the quarters? I don't live in Buckingham. You haven't denied that you don't give them free electricity? I don't need to deny it, and I don't so have any they, they, they have to use these exercise bikes just to get servants. the light on, do they get the telly to work? I don't have any... Look, let on your mind... rare wander. occasion that you let them actually have some free time to themselves. I don't have any servants. Next question, please. You disgust me. Bob, as a millionaire living in, in Buckinghamshire Pleasure Dome with your solid gold hip replacement and your addiction to flower nectar, do you allow your servants to operate under their God-given names, or do you issue them with new identities once they arrive off the boat from Calais? New identities which could consist of anything from a random series of letters and numbers to a contemptuous grunting noise. Um, I refer you to my previous answer, and I would only add that, actually, I do like nectar. I do like nectar, no, and I do... Little, little pieces being stripped away there of the edifice. Well, well a tiny little piece, yeah. Uh, yeah. And when I'm in hotter countries, I sometimes buy a nectar... Um, a, a nectar thing. I don't know what you call it, and you don't pick on us for it, but it's to attract hummingbirds. Yeah, I bet so I refer you to my previous answer, plus I add that I actually do like nectar. So do you, do you refer to them as their, their proper names, like Carlos or... I refer to my previous answer. Julio. Answers. I prefer refer to my previous answer. Have you got another question? Bob. As a millionaire living in a Buckinghamshire pleasure dome with your solid gold hip replacement, addition to flower nectar and your walk-in bath made of ivory, you old bastard can you confirm or deny the existence of bob fest an annual summer event that you hold around the back of your orchard attended by the local parish councillors and the dirty old alderman in which you all join hands and form a circle while your poor servants are forced to dance naked to the complete musical works of yosu and Dua in a giant paddling pool filled with swore figure bob fest tell me about bob fest with regard to bob fest it doesn't exist. I don't have any servants. I haven't had it replacement. Why you would think I've had it replacement, the way I move, is beyond me. What, you're saying you're a good mover? Yeah. <laughs> Silky. You can't, no, you can't deny that, Andy. I don't hobble along, do I? I've not seen you do stairs before. Well, what, when we leave this building, what behind me? All right, I will. textbook. Right, I will. All right. I'll but film it. With regard to the rest of it... But I refer to previous I'd say I'm, I don't have any servants and I'm not a millionaire. So how much do you charge for Bob Fest? How much do you charge the There is no such thing. There's no such thing as Bob Fest. Oh, so it's free. There's no such thing as Bob Fest, all right. Do you know you charge, Are you finished with your If you question? charge you'd need a license, wouldn't you? Although you'd probably get that as a backhander from the parish councillors who you let come in anyway. Yeah, because I'm so sweet with the alderman. Yeah. Yeah. The dirty old alderman. No, I well, you're just old. You're sweet on the dirty old alderman. No, I'm not sweet on him. And what you say with, pool filled a swarf Are you saying what are you saying when they say I'm sweet with the alderman? You say we're kissed or that we correspond or that what what I'm you saying? You've kissed. I've snogged the alderman. I'm not saying snogged. I'm saying kissed. It might have just been a peck. But I think you've kissed the alderman. Well, I'll kiss the ultimate. <laughs> I think you have. <laughs> the, the, um, what do you think of nachos and dips? You moved on quickly there, didn't you? Well, I presume you're finished. Do you have nachos and dips at Bobfest? Uh, na- what do you think of nachos and dips? They're all right. Really? Yeah. This, don't you think they're a bit... Um, what does prescient mean? We're struggling there, aren't we? It's a kind of into the future, isn't it? A prediction. No, that's not what I mean. It's not it's the just, word, is it? It just it seems to me, I was just disappointed. Like, I watched um, some football the other day, this playoffs, with me, me, with me kids. So yeah. I said, shall we get some football snacks? And to me, football snacks is like... Jara uh, Dolmeo. Um, well, for you, not for me, is like, you get Watsits, definitely. Get some Dairy Lee triangles. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. A real treat. Some iced buns, for example. Mm-hmm. And then what in nachos and dips? Where does that come from? It's from Mexico, same as oh, you. All right. I see, as you. So you're happy with nachos and dips. It's will they be your Euro snack? The same place as where your uh, where your slaves come from. Your, will you have nachos and dips for your Euro 60, 2016 viewing? I don't particularly feel the need to have dips and snacks and that when I'm watching football. Yes, you do. Look at look at you. Are you you're a snacker. You're a snacker. 
you know, I just have three meals a day. They just happen to be massive. You don't snack in between Never. drinks. <laughs> Shall we play a proper footballer? Go on then, yeah, who goes first? But we're going to do it differently this week, aren't we? Just going to oh, one we? round of proper footballer. All right. One. And who's going first? One. I am. And who's deciding? I am. All right, well, I, I wonder who's going to win this one then. Right, Phil Bardsley. Phil Bardsley. That is good. Uh, that is very, very good. He's the one who knocked um, knocked Rooney out, isn't he? In his own kitchen. Yeah. I'm afraid I suspect you've lost, <laughs> even though you're deciding, because I'm going to hit you with Kevin Nolan. Nah. Oh, Bardsley come on, Andy. Nolan. I don't think so. Go, uh, Kevin Nolan, the chicken dance celebration. Yeah. That's not the act of a proper footballer. Phil, That's the act of a tit. Yeah, but Phil Baz, he's a fringe proper player, isn't he? He's on the he's fringes. He's proper. No, but you're struggling to find proper. I mean, he's... he's well, you're struggling as well. You've got Nolan. Kevin Nolan and Kevin Derby's high-scoring proper footballers. All right, then. You should have gone with Davies. He might have won. All right, then. Nolan. And I decide this leg of it. Right, go on, then. Proper football club. You go first. Why am I going first? Because I went first last time. Proper football club. You didn't, but I know, mind. but... Burnley. <laughs> Burnley? Burnley. Oh, well, you've lost. I, I could say any club. I could say any club. What, AFC Wimbledon? Yeah. Are you going to that, are you? Yeah. MK would, Dons. No, but what I'll do is I'll instantly knock it into touch by saying Everton. It's a proper football club. Third round, Andy. What about proper, what about proper much, food? Why does Everton beat Oh, of course. Andy, let's not even go there. Burnley. Honestly, Hull. Won that one as well. The um, proper food. Proper food, right? You can go first this time. And who's deciding? I am. All right. Proper food, for me, you don't have to look any further than steak and chips. Right. Right, well, I've got the Aldi Four Bird Roast. <laughs> uh, chicken, turkey, duck and goose. Yeah. Each one stuffed inside the other in order of size, like a Russian doll. Can you imagine? Nine ninety nine from Aldi at Christmas. Can you imagine the carnage at the factory where they assemble oh, it? Oh, man. Jesus. Well, I'm going to call that one a draw. So that's 3-0 to me, then. Nice okay. One. Okay. I, do you know, I thought it might be 3-0. just had that feeling that I wasn't, you know, that it, that's what it would happen. I'm glad I'm getting back into it. Okay, well, do you want to finish there, Andy? Because we're drawing in on yeah, and on. Yeah, I've had enough. Um, I'm, I'm just... not even going to stick around for your song. You're not even sticking around for nah. it? Do you like it on Britain's Got Talent when David Williams gets up? I've never watched Britain's Got Talent ah. for about nine years. All right. It's just, well, you're missing out in that sense. Well, I have got a song. If you want, I, I can either well, well, do... Tell us what it's about and I'll decide if I'm going to stay for it. Well, it's an old song um, that I've sung in the past. It's about being trapped in a council flat and it does go on a bit, Andy. What are you doing old songs for? Well, I just, it was on me. I was... Did you not think of a new one? Well, I'll make you, one up if Maybe you want, we should but... come up with one for the England squad for next week. So you don't want to hear this one? Go on then, just do it. It does go on. Go on then. You can just turn it off, turn off the tape when right, you get okay. fed up with it, right. okay? Fair enough. So this was Atletico Mints. Yeah, we're on Twitter at Atletico Mints. We're doing a, a live podcast in September in uh, King's Place in London. In King, you King's Cross. still get tickets for that. If you have a look at our tweets, there'll be links and that. Okay, right. Do the song, Bob. I haven't left my flat for over three months Since the council erected an iron door An easy mistake for the council to make But the grills on the window are an eyesore I shouted out the window, I shouted out the door I tried to tunnel out through the kitchen floor I pushed lighted paper through the letterbox But no one saw because of the iron door I phoned up the council There was no reply Oh, well, I'm not doing it If you're just going gonna... to Yeah, it's just me Yeah, be back at 11 No, don't go on the phone when yeah. I'm doing it. Trapped in no, my that's, flat that's, that's just Bobby's doing a song Only no, my memories it. for company Yeah, about 11, see you then Trapped Bob. in my flat Hoping someone will come and rescue me there's nothing I can do, oh, and all oh, right, forget it. <laughs>